Hey, what up everybody? Thanks for tuning in. It's Jake here. I found some beef short ribs here at Costco this morning. So uh, I thought today we'd be doing some Filipino beef uh, short rib adobo. Something amazing, something delectable. Let's go get it. All right, we're gonna start off with a short rib. I'm gonna cut these down into manageable pieces, about an inch by an inch and a half, just like that, okay? And uh, we're gonna throw them in a bowl. All right, so as you can see, there's a little bit of sinew here. Um, some uh, silver skin. I'm just going to clean it up. Take that off. Then we're going to save that because we can seal with that. Uh, stick that in the pan. Use that to help create a bit of a fond. All right, there we go. All right, next up, we're going to address um, our garlic now adobo filipino adobo especially is known for a few vital ingredients garlic black pepper vinegar or some sort of acidic um, quality and um, some sort of uh, salty um, quality uh, soy sauce or salt uh, there is such thing as like a white adobo where you use salt as opposed to soy sauce um, you know both of which will render very similar results, just different looks. Um, I'm gonna be adding a few more other things to this to make it a little bit more special, but for the garlic portion, we're gonna to try to keep it as simple as possible. We're literally gonna keep the head as intact as possible. And I'm just gonna cut it down the middle. All right, we're trying not to mess it up too much. Um, and we're going to sear each side and try to get some browning on that. Some will probably fall out, that's fine. Um, you know, but for the majority of them, we wanna keep them together because we don't necessarily want a ton of um, little chunks of garlic. A lot of them will melt away, um, you know, granted, but we don't want all of, all of them to just be floating around in the, in the sauce. It gets a little bit uh, weird and unsightly. So try to cut them in half. Try to keep them intact or as much intact as possible. Just like that. And that's gonna be the first thing we stick in the pan. All right, so next up, we're gonna do two things that you don't typically see, um, but things that I like to do for my adobo so that we can really double down on the flavor. This is a tea infuser. You open it up, you stick tea in, you can you know make yourself some tea. I use it for spices when I wanna add an extra hit. So I'm gonna fill a tea infuser with some black peppercorns. I'm not going to be shy. I'm really going to try to pack this up. Oh, and then overboard. So you can see, right? I don't know, maybe that's about a tablespoon or so, which is going to be enough. Just going to close it up. I'm going to throw this in this in the um, pot when it's ready to stew. Right? I'm going to keep that off to the side. The next thing I'm going to be doing is uh, adding a little bit of bay leaf. Now, these are beef, by the way. Bay leaf uh, is something that's used widely in Filipino cooking. Um, I happen don't, to not have any right now. I wish I did. I don't know why, though. We we go through these spells here where I can't get bay leaf and certain herbs every so often. So um, I've opted today to use this and this is a bay leaf powder i found this at a portuguese um like a grocery store I'm not going to be using a lot it's going to be using a bit to season the beef with maybe a teaspoon and a half teaspoon teaspoon will do all right and then we're going to mix this all together I'm also going to add to the beef some salt. Not too much. Maybe a tablespoon. 
half a tablespoon. And some freshly cracked black pepper. You see recipes of people putting like Worcestershire sauce and stuff in there, which is fine, but I tend not to do it, especially with my marinades, because I don't want my marinades to burn. So if you use it, usually just stick with dry ingredients, then you can get that sear you really want, barring that you don't use too much. A um, little bit of oil, just vegetable oil, and we will mix. Need your glove. All right, here we go. Let's get down and dirty in that. We want to distribute that powder. The bay leaf's not going to do very much. You're not going to get an enormous um, bay leaf flavor, but it will be there like it is if, as if you were using an actual bay leaf. Very particular with my flavors, so. Okay, okay, so here we have a uh, Dutch oven, um, heavy bottom Dutch oven. And we're going to start searing the meat. Uh, so let's get it heated up. All right, so we're gonna get some oil in the pan. Not too much, just enough to get things going. And the first thing we're gonna stick in the pan to get you how hot it is, is that, um, that silver skin that I pulled off uh, when I was first chopping the meat. Hearing that sound, seeing how, seeing how it's sizzling well, I'm going to start adding some meat to the pan. And I'm going to try it on over the top. All right. This is going to be cooking for a while in the oven. So you don't want to start steaming at this point. You really want to get the good color on it. And you take the time with it. All right, guys, so as I'd mentioned, we're going to be doing the garlic. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of color on that, too. So turn the flame back on. Go and jack it down. Very gently, we're going to lay our garlic halves in. Like So as you can see, we're going to lose some. That's OK. Just take some of those out. Put them back in later. But we really want to focus on some charring here. Guess what I'll do. Black ah, without. Alright, All right, next up in the pan. Some anchovy paste. Anchovy paste will bring out the meatiness in the beef. I'm a big fan of using anchovy paste in my stews. Then put a little bit more pepper, this time cracked black. And I mean a lot. Alright, adobo is known for garlic and pepper. The equivalent would be like a cacho y pepe in the Italian food. You really want to go heavy with the pepper. If you're not touching the pepper, it's debatable. If you're not tasting the pepper, sorry, um, it's debatable whether or not you're actually having a Filipino adobo. That's right, I said it. All right, so I put a bit more. All right, so I can see right here that there's going that there's already some um, browning happening. So I am going to now deglaze with some stock. Some chicken stock I made from a few days before. Oops. Don't make it myself in the
Yikes, look at that. Oh God, what a mess. All right, now we've got some stock in there. What we're gonna do is gently just scrape the bottom. Do not disturb that garlic. Okay, try to keep it together. Just to make sure there's no huge pieces of crud or fond on the bottom. We really want to try to get all that stuff off. It's bubbling, good to go. This is when we're going to add all the other stuff that goes typically into an adobo. That is coconut vinegar. You can use any vinegar you like. I like this one. I'm going to put maybe about a quarter cup in there. We have a little bit of uh, regular or light soy sauce. Maybe about a tablespoon. Dark soy sauce. Maybe about one, two. Two teaspoons. This, you've seen me cook with it before, mushroom powder, because beef and mushroom go excellently well together. We're gonna put in maybe two tablespoons. And we're going to take this bad boy and throw that into. You can smell it now, it's sour, it's salty. And now's the time we're going to add the beef. All right, so I've wisened up. Now I'm going to use a ladle. You can see how much collagen is in that stock. I spent a lot of time rendering this down. This is my signature stock. Maybe someday I'll tell you about it. <laughs> got beef bones. That's all I'll tell you right now. Okay, and we're gonna bring this back up to a boil before we place it back in, uh, or into the oven. All right, so now that we've gotten back up to the boil, I'm making a slurry and then we're gonna stick it in the oven. Uh, this is just water and cornstarch. And to this, uh, I'm adding a little bit of port very little bit, I mean like a bit, all right? Like not too much for flavor. And then this, some Jamaican browning for some color. I mean, I could just leave it without, but it's an opportunity to inject some flavor and character. Why not do it, right? right so I'm just gonna mix that around and make sure that becomes a cohesive mass. Go. Yeah. I'm gonna evenly throw this in. And what that will do is give it some body. So you can see it already. It looks beautiful. Now you see these pieces flying up. These uh, shells, don't worry, that's fine. We're gonna strain everything when it's done so that we don't get chunks of garlic and everything. That looks good to me now. That tastes great, good to go. So we're gonna throw this into an oven at 250 for about five hours. Hey everybody, we're back here. It's been four hours, not five, um, on the 250 in the stove. Um, it appears that we're done. So we're gonna now uh, separate the meat from the uh, remaining bits uh, that are inside the stock or in the gravy. And we're going to strain the gravy and then reduce it to fin finish it off. So as you can see, the bits, the ch bits of meat are still pretty much put together, uh, still together, sorry. Um, but it is quite tender, as you can see, it's fork tender. And that's exactly what we want. Pretty easy at this point to separate the meat. And as you can see, the garlic stays together, so it becomes easier to take out. You'll get some bits flying here or there, or sorry, floating here or there, but 
it's all good. We can just take those out really easily. But for the most part, all of the meat is perfectly cooked and not completely falling apart, which is right about where you want it. If I went to five hours, it probably would be a bit too over that, um, you know, overcooked. Not that it wouldn't be delicious, but it's, you know, it would be falling apart and it'd be a bit harder to retrieve out of the broth. So, um, you know, it's good that we checked it at four and uh, I felt that it was good enough to pull out. So, I think I got everything. There's a couple pieces left. indicate to you how you know cooked but still one mass the meat is that'll be delicious knock some of the off. now if I were making this say in my younger days before I had kids or you know that sort of thing I would probably just eat it the way it is I don't particularly mind but my kids out of necessity um, I gotta strain it because my kids don't like chunks of anything uh, black stuff uh, definitely not garlic floating around in their gravy turns out it's a good way to have adobo because it's it's pretty elegant all right and I think that's the last bit all right so now we're gonna strain this all right, so to strain it, um, I really just have a pot, which I'll be reducing it in, and a colander, or a strainer. And uh, this is done. Actually, you know what? Let's take this out. Remember this, this bad boy? That's done its job, so that doesn't need to be there anymore. All right. And what we'll do is we'll just sort of pour it through the strainer. If you have a, a chinois or a, some sort of conical strainer, that would be best because that, oh look, there's a piece of meat there. Good thing. We'll take that out and reserve that too. Conical strainers are awesome. That's what they use in restaurants. They're uh, a bit more efficient at straining, but for home, this is perfect. Man, this is not, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. All right, and as you can see, you can't see, oops. It's all just the remaining garlic, right? I could probably squeeze out a little bit more juice out of that. Let's do it. Oops. All right. And that, We'll leave us with oh shit. this and here's the remainder and let that strain Just push it through oh yeah And we have this beautiful adobo gravy. Taste it for seasoning. Well, actually, it doesn't need much. So we're gonna get this back on the heat, just reduce it a little bit more. All right, guys, so now we got it coming to a rolling boil. Um, we're gonna let it continue to reduce, slowly but surely. Um, and I'm sure you've noticed that at this point, I actually hadn't added much salt or very much salt uh, into the broth. Uh, I'd salted the meat, uh, I'd put some um, mushroom powder in there, but I hadn't added any salt yet because uh, I wanted it to reduce first, get to the consistency that I like, and then I could finish it and do the final flavor adjustments, including the salinity and the sweet if necessary, and the final hit of sour. 
So we're gonna let the we're gonna let this continue to reduce until it gets to the consistency we like, and then um, we'll plate it up. All right, guys. This is a quick sidebar. I'm gonna show you guys a uh, really quick but delicious side that this elder Filipino lady showed me once. I believe it was at a picnic or something. Family picnic to which I was the guest of a friend. But essentially, you're taking tomatoes. And this goes particularly well with adobo. For some reason, I'm not too sure. But uh, you just get some tomatoes. In this case, I have some cherries. Cut them in half. And it's literally adding some fish sauce to the mix. Not even a lot, just a bit. And tossing it around. Done. A little salty, tangy hit while you have your adobo. All right, so now the sauce has been reduced to the consistency that I like. As you can see, it's uh, thickened, but not too thick. Adobo, I feel, should not be too thick. I've been to some restaurants where they served a thick adobo sauce, probably thickened with potato starch or cornstarch. It's okay, you know, it's not really authentic. Um, authentic adobo is usually somewhat of a watery sauce. We've gone just beyond the point of watery, as you can see. It is, according to classical French cooking methods, um, it is a sauce where it can, where a line can be drawn in a spoon. Perfect how I like it. To finish it, um, sometimes, you know, if it was too acidic, you can add some sugar to temper it. It's actually bang on, I don't need any sugar. It's meaty, uh, it's got some natural sweetness to it, um, savoriness, pepperiness from all the pepper we placed in there. So uh, a little trick for most stews is to add one or two drops of um, vinegar or acid to give it one final pop of life. In this case, we're using sherry, sherry vinegar because I'm fancy like that. And it's literally just a bloop just a drop, and what that will do is it will brighten up the sauce and give it that one final hit of acidity that oh, balances out everything. All right, so now that it's where we want it to be, we're gonna add the meat back in. Look how gorgeous that is. Meat's fully cooked, not overcooked. The sauce is reduced to perfection. I'm gonna reheat the meat back in the sauce gently. Okay, being sure to remove any garlic peels or particles of garlic left on the meat. And what we're left with is a really gorgeous, elegant adobo sauce. And you know, if you ask me, it's the right, it's the right way to treat this meat because it's expensive, right? Short rib is not cheap. You know, um, where I am, it costed me $45 for that pack. So I want to make sure I give it the utmost respect and treat it properly. So here we are guys, the strained sauce, cooked meat. It's gorgeous, it's delicious. Full of flavor, meaty, a little bit sour, salty, good to go. Let's plate it up and give it a taste. All right guys, the moment we've been waiting for, time to plate up. Right, so we got our white rice, jasmine preferably. Let's get some of that meat on first. Yeah, that's the consistency we want. Perfect. 
watery, but not too watery. Just a bit thick. All right, and just some of these fish sauce tomatoes to garnish. And there we go. Filipino short rib adobo with uh, fish sauce, to cherry tomatoes. Let's give it a shot. Oh, 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 oh look at that. Oh. All those tomatoes. All right, guys. Salud. Mmm. Oh my lord. Oh. Holy. Give it a shot. Try this recipe out, guys. You won't be disappointed. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe. Ding that little bell to get some notifications on my future videos. We're really trying to put some stuff out here, creative stuff that you don't really see. Try to help you level up your game out there. But I think uh, we've successfully done that with this dish. This is a Filipino beef boneless short rib adobo. Um, classic adobo with some fish sauce, cherry tomatoes. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by. You know, I appreciate you. Till the next video. Peace.